and that they believe that that's a disorder. Well, it's a syndrome. It's a disorder that has uh, hundreds, hundreds of different causes from a simple piriformis syndrome to an entrapment disorder to a, to a spinal uh, lesion, a herniated disc. There's a lot of reasons that someone may have what we call sciatica. Relating that, and we can also understand that someone that's under stress has a flare-up of sciatica. Someone with sciatica has intestinal issues. How do we relate that? Well, a good doctor can and kind of figure out what's going on. What we're trying to do here today is to evaluate what it is that we do in our particular practice and allow the doctors around everywhere to understand that there is a huge gamut and a huge disconnect if we believe that joint-related problems stay with joint-related problems. Anyone here can tell you that if they have a knee problem, they have a neck problem many times if it's chronic and prolonged. If they have a, if a, uh, an ankle problem, well, you can tell you that the opposite hip may have issues. Now, someone who's an athlete who is extreme and really calibrated well may be able to tell you right away, you know what, my knee hurts and now my back is hurting. That correlation is very, very understood by someone who uses their body in extreme ways. But for the average individual, the, the mom, the dad, the grandma that doesn't understand that uh, or doesn't understand the logic of the connectivity, we are here to kind of expel disorder, uh, actually miss and kind of bring it together so that everyone understands and bring in the type of specialist such as an orthopedist that can work on the meniscus and work with chiropractors and physical therapy, uh, massage therapists and actually come up to the right treatment uh, uh, protocols. Using the example of surgeries, we are non-surgical specialists. We are the ones that basically see people before surgery. Uh, a new clinical study has demonstrated today uh, that recently I just actually posted that 25% of chiropractors that send to an orthopedic surgeon actually get surgery. Yet, almost 95% of referrals from an allopathic medicine doctor uh, do not need surgery. What does that mean? that chiropractors in general or physical medicine doctors that work on these issues can filter out the disorders before they need actually surgical intervention. This is just a concept that is just out there. It seems like it's a little bit abstract in the concepts, but actually determine what is surgical is important because a lot of people don't need surgery. That's one of the things uh, is, do they need uh, autoimmune uh, medicines? Maybe. The, the idea is, is that we have to work with rheumatologists and specialists that work on different disorders to come up what is best for the patient and what is necessary. Not necessarily always do we need surgery and not necessarily always do we need medications. We've learned the consequence of medication. We've learned the consequence that every medication has a side effect. Sometimes when you take two, well, sometimes you can understand what the side effects are. But when you start taking three, four, five, six, ten, fifteen at times, I've been a pharmacy of stuff, you really don't know what the side effects are and may be causing other issues like emotional issues, uh, neurological issues, neurodegenerative disorders. It crisscrosses. So the best way to do it is to have a unified treatment protocol with multiple different providers treating an issue. Now, I have a, a, a great panel here and what we're going to be discussing is what we do in our particular office and what we do in our office is determine uh, what's best for the patient with putting a whole team around them from orthopedist to neurologist to figure out what integrative medicine is about because there is a place and modern medicine requires integrative medicine in whole health and in whole fitness. So we, we are today um, in a wonderful site located here in El Paso. We are, we are in a beautiful fitness facility actually where we treat actually athletes. Uh, some of the top athletes work in this very building that we're in that are actually young kids from four to five years old when they can pay attention to the division one athletes and some even deciding to be Olympic you know, candidates. So when you see athletes and you understand the dynamic movements going through their injury processes is a whole body the assessment that we have to figure out. It's a lifetime change and it's a lifetime assessment. So having great doctors is very important. I'm glad to say that we have a lot here and, and a lot around the country. So what we have to do is actually bring up the awareness as to why we treat the motion issues, okay? Now, beyond motion, one of the common parallels that we have is inflammation. Inflammation seems to be one of the, 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 the lines, the things that kind of connect every one of these disorders into one disorder to the other, whether it's rheumatoid, inflammation, diabetes, inflammation, such as pancreatic cells. We have liver inflammation. We have disorders that cause problems with the intestinal dysbiosis, inflammation of the gut. That has relationship to moan, the bones, to joints. And what we need to do is we need to understand that as a team, we need to ferret out the questions to basically find out. 
When patients present to us, they present to us as, as almost like a, a one, uh, two-dimensional object, basically with just like, a, I'd call it like a domino. I see a domino and I got presentations that are the symptoms and objective, subjective findings. Beyond that, what we do is we, we sometimes just get the initial subjective and findings, but we need to find the history. We need to go back. We need to go back a couple of dominoes ago.